your perspective on life and how you see the world 100% dictates your confidence, your success, the rate at which you grow, the rate at which you, you know, create your dream life. Your perspective is everything. And I'm going to read a little snippet from this book that I've been reading at the moment. It's called The Happiness Advantage by um, Sean Aker. He basically talks about this concept of the lever and the falcon. So I will put a picture of the lever and the falcon on the screen. As you can see, the little triangle is right in the middle. So if we have a heavy load on either side, it's obviously going to tip the balance. But if you move up the falcon, the little triangle thing, towards the end where the weight is heavier, it's actually easy to lift the weight. And that's just how levers work. The closer you put the little triangle part to the heavier side, it's actually easy to easier even to lift that heavy weight than if you put it all at the other end it's going to be a lot harder to lift that heavy weight at the end when you haven't got this much kind of oomph and that's how perspective work works the more negative or the more positive your perspective is on everything that happens to you because the things that happen to you in life are neutral objectively you know things go wrong things go right and it's actually really how you see it that determines how you kind of work through it. If you have a perspective of positivity and you see rejection, um, you know, failure and so on, if you can change the perspective and flip the script on those things, which is what I'm gonna get into in this video, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to push that heavy weight because you're moving that triangle towards the heavy weight. And actually by this positive perspective that you have, you are making it easier to lift that heavy weight because you're, your perspective makes it that much more manageable. You're getting out of your own way. There are eight perspective shifts that are gonna change your life. Like for real, are going to change the way that you see the world. For such a long time, I had such a negative view on life. I would see things through this negative lens, you know, this is not meant for me. This, you know, is proof that I'm never gonna be successful. I'm never gonna grow. I'm never gonna be confident. That is such a waste of time. You know, instead I should have said, this is a chance for me to grow. This is a chance for me to become more confident, to level up, to become more successful. Can you see how objectively it's quite neutral, but how you see it, you either see it as an opportunity or you see it as a block, is going to determine whether or not you move forward and, and progress on or whether you're just gonna let it hold you back. It's a neutral thing and how we see it determines our growth. The first area that we tend to see a lot of people shy away from and don't lean into is discomfort. When we focus on what is uncomfortable and we say, oh, this is so annoying, I can't believe this is in my in my way, like this is so annoying, I don't wanna go through it, discomfort is unpleasant and we avoid discomfort, we are denying ourselves the opportunity to grow. And as the saying goes, you tend to find growth in the discomfort. You tend to find um, elevation when it's hard. You know, diamonds are made under pressure. Discomfort is an opportunity. And all of these are opportunities for the better. But often when we encounter discomfort, whether it's, you know, calling out an issue because something has been said that bothered you, or it's um, saying no to somebody at work who is expecting you to do double the amount of work in the same amount of time, or standing up for yourself in the face of people trying to tell you that there's something wrong with you and actually having that self-belief, or standing up for something that you know is right, even though nobody else agrees with you, you know, disagreeing with the masses, holding other people accountable. These are all difficult things that we have to do, but are actually going to make us grow. So if you're in a job that you really don't like, it doesn't gel with you, you don't like having to go to work, it doesn't set your soul on fire, but you're scared of the discomfort that is, you know, looking for another job or quitting and then, you know, finding yourself in a place where you really have to look for a new job or you're gonna start something new and start working for yourself. That's an uncomfortable thing that a lot of people will avoid even though they're unhappy. And this is where I feel like the, in my, the way I describe it is the sort of valley of doom. It's like, you know, it's not that uncomfortable that, that we want to leave necessarily, but it doesn't set our soul on fire. It doesn't make us feel very good. And we end up in this sort of valley of doom. Make sure that you're pushing through the discomfort. Make sure that you're thinking to yourself, look, I'm not happy here. I want to thrive and not just exist. I want to truly be happy. I've got to go through the discomfort that is looking for a new job. Um, you know, immersing myself in a new job, which is also really scary. Taking a pay cut, doing something on my own, becoming an entrepreneur, becoming a self-employed person. That's all uncomfortable. 
and most people will avoid it because it's so uncomfortable, but they don't realize that they'd actually level up, they'd actually grow and they'd actually be more fulfilled if they sat in a discomfort. Every single time I have been faced with discomfort, I now think to myself, thank you, the universe, because this is an opportunity for me to grow. This is an opportunity, you're giving me an opportunity for me to level up. It's not here to hold me back. And I think that's a perspective that we need to understand is discomfort, literally discomfort in any capacity is a sign, is trying to tell you something, is trying to tell you there's an opportunity here for you to kind of have a better life. If we avoid discomfort, we end up actually avoiding the great things in our lives. For example, I'm a recovering people pleaser. If I never chose to grow, if I never decided, look, this is an unfulfilling life for me, I'm dodging you know, pissing people off all the time because I'm scared of being rejected. I would never live a fulfilling life if I if I continued on the track that I was on. I would constantly be living in everybody else's shadow. I would not be able to stand up for myself. I would resent myself. I would, yeah, be living a life for everybody else, putting everybody else first. And only through the discomfort of deciding to walk away from friends that relied on my, on my people pleaser tendencies, choosing to stand up for myself, saying no to people that were relying on me to kind of, yeah, say yes for their benefit. Did I become more fulfilled? Have I become this confident person and somebody who is really sure of themselves? And that's because I sat in the discomfort. That's because I recognized that discomfort was the only place I was gonna grow and I was going to become confident. In the face of discomfort, face it. Don't shy away from it because you'll regret it later and you're signing yourself up for a life of suffering even if in the in that momentary period, that's short term discomfort, even if it feels like it's suffering then, you've got to realize that it's so much better to suffer in the short term and just get it over and done with for the long term peace than it is to choose the short term comfort because you will suffer in the long run. It's also about the language that we use. The second one I'm going to talk about is problems versus challenges. Seeing things as a problem suggests it's inherently negative. It's there to kind of put you off, to distract you. It's a thorn in your side. It's something that, you know, you you don't want to have to deal with. It's not there for your benefit. Whereas when you see it as a challenge, you see it as a benefit for yourself. There's a difference. Problems are seen as a disadvantage, whereas challenges are actually seen as an advantage it's an opportunity again it's going back to the opportunity thing when we see things as challenges again it's a chance for us to gain a new skill learn more about ourselves to grow as a person to gain more experience for the greater good i think it's very easy to fall into this victim mentality we see it as something we just had to get over to get to where we want to be without recognizing that actually that's probably the catalyst that allowed us to get to where we want to be being able to change the language you use and see problems as a challenge will stop you from getting distracted with the why and why is this happening to me? Why do, do I always get faced with problems? Why is it always me? Is the world against me? Is the universe conspiring against me? Whereas if you see it as a challenge, you're like, oh, the universe is conspiring for me. Thank you for the challenge. I'm excited to get through this. I'm excited to push myself so that I am ready for the next level. And only by experiencing these little challenges are we going to become equipped enough to deal with that massive success? So what you could see it as, instead of a problem, you could see challenges as one step further to where you want to be. I am one more step along my success journey. And you're going to confidently as well be able to push through challenges because you're not taking it personally. You're not thinking, oh, this is so annoying. Problems always happen to me. You're just gonna be like, thank you. Oh my God, this is such a great opportunity. It's a bit hard and I'm a bit overwhelmed and it's a bit scary and maybe a little bit out of my comfort zone but oh my god I'm so grateful for it because now I get the opportunity to be that much closer to my goal to my dream to where I want to be I had a comment on a video the other day that I did about rejection and how of course rejection is usually redirection but this person actually said rejection as well can be protection and again it's seeing it as a positive rather than negative when we feel rejected honestly it can be the hardest thing as humans it is probably one of the most emotionally painful things to experience when we get rejected many of us will do anything in our power to avoid rejection because on a literal caveman level we can't deal with it the problem with this is when we are so scared of being rejected sometimes we end up abandoning ourselves 
to fit in. Sometimes we end up staying in spaces that are not meant for us. And sometimes we hold ourselves back from the path that we're meant to be on when we are so hell bent on fitting in and avoiding rejection. As this person said on my TikTok video, rejection is protection sometimes. A really good example of this is, say if you're in a friendship group that doesn't make you feel very good, but you stay there because you're scared of having no friends, you are harming yourself at that point or they're they're harming you when you stay there when you're not meant to be there if these people are not aligned with you if you don't feel good around them if you kind of feel like left out even when you're around them that's there to show you that those people are not meant for you if you listen to that sign and you listen to that voice that's telling you these people aren't meant for me i don't feel like i fit in this is not the right place if you then act on that you will actually, first of all, inadvertently find the right people, your community, because you've decided to walk away from those people. You're being redirected on the right path to finding your community. Whereas if you stay with these people, you are blocking yourself from finding the right people, but you're also protecting yourself from further harm you know, down the line. Because inevitably, if we surround ourselves with people that we don't feel like we connect with, they're not right for us, relationships, friendships, you know, family members, we are signing ourselves up for a life of suffering because we are constantly having to mold ourselves and do a lot of emotional labor just to be around them. All in the name of not being rejected without realizing that we're basically being rejected anyway. Like no matter what we do, even if we try and sort of try and fit in and we try and stay there, we're still going to always feel that rejected feeling and you are signing yourself up from feelings of rejection further down the line when you force it. However, sometimes it's just best to cut the cord and see it as an opportunity for you to actually find the right people, find your community. Yes, there might be a period of time where you feel a bit alone, you may not have any friends or you may not have a partner, but there will come a time when if you choose deliberately the people that you have in your life and you actually allow yourself to take yourself away from people that basically reject you you will eventually find your community because in that mo in that time when you are alone you find out more about yourself you learn about what actually matters to you and what do you don't want and what you do want and you end up manifesting simply by being your authentic self the right people for your life. So for example, for me, I decided last year that I was going to walk away from several friendships that were making me feel like shit. And it's redirected me to now putting all of my energy and my love into people around me that matter to me, you know, my, my circle, but also my art and also my businesses. And it has made the world of difference this year. So if it's not community that, that you, find by deciding to walk away from people that reject you um or even just you know post rejection you're actually redirected to pour your love and your passions into things that really matter to you your hobbies you know your um, passion projects your health and well-being that's such a gift i mean obviously at the time it might not feel like that granted like give yourself space to be upset and grieve and so on but over time you will be grateful for it because it's redirected you into something that is much more valuable to you and something that makes you feel so much more fulfilled. We can't necessarily see that at the time. Again, with all of these things, it's so challenging at the time to see the benefit of these things, but there is always a reason for things that happen and experiences we have and change our perspective to see it as an opportunity or as a gift. You're sorted, your confidence is gonna skyrocket. On top of that as well, if you are okay with rejection, like you can deal with it and you, you are okay with people rejecting you, you're so fucking powerful. Like if you, if you are not bothered about being liked, you're not bothered about popularity, you are not bothered about people accepting you, you're so fucking powerful. So just know that rejection is actually an opportunity for you to have a greater amount of self-confidence and self-trust. And it's also an opportunity for you to find the right people and stop spending time with people that make you feel alone. Being able to see triggers as an opportunity to heal is a very powerful and a very important skill to develop. When we have had a traumatic incident happen and it's it's basically created a belief in our head or a insecurity in our head that then gets 
aggravated through triggers over and over again, you're actually re-experiencing the initial incident that caused the trigger in the first place, which is why it's so important to be aware of your triggers and to work on them. If we do not decide to heal, if we do not decide to clock our triggers and try and work through them, we are signing ourselves up for a life of suffering. Actually, our triggers are there to reveal to us the wounds that we need to heal. A really big trigger for me, or was for me certainly, was feeling excluded. So being able to work through that, through the times when I would get triggered by feeling excluded or feeling like I, I didn't belong, was a really key part to me. And realizing like, why is that a trigger for me? What's happened in the past that has caused me to feel like I don't matter when somebody excludes me or to see my worth as less when somebody excludes me is has been such an important journey for me. Um, and I realized that when I was about four years old and my mum told me about this was um, this girl in my class um, invited everybody but me to um, a birthday party. And obviously kids are cruel, right? You know, they don't, they just act based on their own emotions. Like they don't really consider other people's emotions or feelings or whatever. But I realized that that was the root cause of probably my feelings of feeling left out. And so probably from that point I was looking out to be excluded and, and left out and so then I would obviously get re-triggered when I would feel excluded or left out or like I didn't matter or people didn't think that I mattered or people didn't really care about whether I was there or not and and obviously as I've got older I, I recognised that it was it said more about them than it did about me and realising that that was something that I needed to work through um, was important because I didn't want to keep re-experiencing it. And this is the thing, when you realise that triggers again are an opportunity for you to heal you sign yourself up for a future of less suffering. So now, like, I don't obviously really experience that um, and I haven't for the past five years because I realised that that was something that I needed to work through and that anybody that did choose to exclude me sucked, like, they were the problem for thinking that it was appropriate to deliberately exclude somebody. That's something that I would never, ever do. I think it's such a mean thing to do. Seeing that as an opportunity for me to think, right, how can I just you know, prevent myself from suffering again, getting re-triggered over and over again. What can I do? And then thinking, okay, I need to work through it and find, you know, be sort of inquisitive and curious. Why is it that I feel this way? What was the first incident, as I described earlier, when I was four years old? What is it about being excluded that bothers me so much? working through that. And when you have a greater understanding of yourself and you see these triggers as, a, as an opportunity to heal a wound, that wound will close up and now, it's not really a trigger for me. Like sometimes obviously if I am excluded, it, it is, it's not the nicest feeling in the world, but it doesn't make me feel so awful. Like it doesn't make me feel like I'm worthless and, and that I don't matter or any of those kind of feelings. It's just like, oh, it's not ideal, but let them really, like if they're gonna do that, thank you for showing me who you truly are. No, thank you. Having that ability to heal those wounds is going to save you so much suffering further down the line because you're seeing it as an opportunity to heal, to grow, to feel better in yourself, rather than, oh, this is so annoying, I'm gonna avoid it. And then you just are gonna carry on, just constantly getting re-triggered and re-triggered and re-triggered over and over again. And it just, again, it just diminishes your confidence. You're constantly worried about getting triggered, so you miss out on opportunities, you, you live a, a less technicolor life. It liberates you, even though it's hard. Again, back to the same concept. In the short term, it sucks and it's hard and pushing yourself through that shadow work is hard. But on the other side, you sign yourself up for a life of fulfillment because you've liberated yourself from that trigger. When you're going through a dark time, darkness can sometimes and quite frequently reveal the light. And what I mean by that is that when you're in your darkest moments, when you're in your absolute depth of doing the sort of shadow work and feeling awful and, and doing the kind of painful work that is healing, it can reveal to us what really matters in life. It definitely shows us who really matters, what we're willing to use our energy on, and we become so much more deliberate with our time and energy. I always think this, you know, when people say they have like a near-death experience and they realise actually what really matters and after that point, you know, they become, they don't let themselves overthink about pointless stuff. They don't worry about small things. They don't worry anymore or wor think about anymore the things that other people think about because 
they realize and have had that moment of clarity of like this is actually what really matters and this doesn't matter and i'm not going to spend my time and energy on it you become more discerning with your time and energy because you've known what it feels like to be threatened with not having any at all and i feel like it's the same with darkness when we're presented with darkness and sadness and we're in the depths of despair it really reveals to us what matters and actually what's important to spend our time and energy on. It's like, you know, when somebody in your family maybe gets sick or unwell, the importance of things like, oh, somebody's kind of annoying at work, oh, I'm worried about getting this paper and oh, I'm worried about this exam or all of those things get completely um, put into context and you realise how unimportant they are. So if we can live a life where we are so hyper aware of what really, really matters, we get out of our own way, we focus on what truly matters, direct our energy on that and liberate ourselves, get to where we want to be that much quicker. You kind of see things from a big picture rather than, you know, what's kind of annoying in the day to day. You're able to kind of see it from a bird's eye point of view and realise objectively and from this point of view, what is it that matters? What are those dots of light that really matter? What shines brightest and what is significant enough for me to focus my energy and time on? Failures are lessons and I know that's going back to what I was saying about problems versus challenges but so many of us often see things that go wrong, things that do not go our way as just flat out failures and that's that's a sign to give up, we're never going to be able to do this, we've tried and tried and tried and it's just not working, let's not bother. Rather than flipping the script and thinking, what is this failure trying to teach me? What is this thing that didn't go my way? What is it trying to teach me? And I think when we see it as a lesson, again, we give ourselves that grace, we give ourselves that opportunity and we give ourselves that freedom to see something that objectively isn't ideal, not great, has kind of pissed us off as again an opportunity to learn a lesson because the thing is when we fail it's often because we need to learn something first before we get to the next step so when we fail or things don't work out or things are slow and they're not working and it's just it's hard they are often there to prepare us for the next level we need to kind of get through those failures to get to the next level it's trying to teach us something that is going to equip us better for handling success. I saw a post the other day on LinkedIn and it was a brick wall and many of the bricks were, were labelled as failures and many of the bricks were labelled as successes. And it just shows that failure is a massive part of success. We cannot succeed without failure. And again, diamonds are made under pressure. Diamonds are made when things don't go well. When we fail, we kind of assume this more determined, and not desperate in a negative way, but a desperate energy to like, you know, tenaciousness. We we want, you know, it kind of like, it can spur us on. It can be like, no, I'm so close. Like, I want to carry on. Like, I want to see this as a lesson and it's equipping me for that. Failures are so integral to success because if we were to succeed all the time, we really wouldn't learn anything. We always learn from our mistakes. The more than any other thing we learn from mistakes. We, we are educated so much by the things that don't go well. And we are able to deal with crises much better. We are able to deal with problems much better when we experience failure or things that don't go very well because we're educating ourselves so much more. If, it just, if it's just like a perfect linear, oh, this went really well straight away and that's it. That's such shaky ground, you know, think something can go wrong and because you haven't had the experience or the skill to develop, you know, how to deal with anything, you could, you know, just as easily topple from the top because you haven't built up those skills and that resilience to get to where you want to be. Being successful requires a lot of resilience and you only become resilient when you fail and fail multiple times. Every successful person has failed and failed and failed and failed and they've carried on. Almost like failure is the prerequisite to success. If you can deal with failure, you can be successful. So see failure as like, yay, I'm one step closer to my success. I'm one step closer to getting to where I want to be because you wouldn't be confronted with failures if the universe didn't want you to succeed. It's part of that brick wall. One of my favorite perspective shifts that I feel like I've really tried to focus on is facing my fears and seeing fears as, again, teaching me something about myself. Weirdly, the antithesis of any fear that you have is actually where confidence lies, is actually where your true passion lies. If you are, for example, for me, 
one of my dreams is to be a singer but I have a little bit of a fear around standing up in front of people and singing because it's like vulnerable you're scared of what people will think but facing that fear is where the magic's going to happen that's where I'm going to find success is really in those places of fear because once I face it and you realize it's not that bad it is amazing it's like the the magic truly does happen so just know that the, the antithesis of your fear is confidence in that specific place. It's like, I always think when you take a risk and you sit in that risk and you sit in that discomfort, that's where you find freedom. Just like by being cringy, that's where you find freedom because you're scared what people might think. And actually, once you push through it, you realize that people actually think positively or you kind of get over the fact that you, you kind of get to the point where you don't even care what people think. So you liberate yourself, you know, freedom comes from facing your fears. And that's the antithesis. It's like freedom is facing your fears. If you can face your fears, you find freedom in whatever that area is. You know, like I said, if I am to face my fear and stand up on stage, I will find freedom in being able to sing and show off my craft and my art and creativity to other people. Just like being able to face my fear of like, for example, initially when I first started doing YouTube, I was scared what people would think. I thought they would think that I was weird and cringy. And now I feel free from worrying about that. I'm like, I don't even care about that. Like, that's not even something that I worry about. Just like I was saying at the beginning about your job, being able to face that fear of, oh, I'm going to be worried about money for a bit and I'm going to be worried about what I'm going to do. What if I don't get another job? Facing that fear, you will find freedom, realising it's not that bad. You're always going to be safe and the universe is going to have your back. You will find freedom when you force yourself to sit in your fear because your fears are showing you what is limiting you. Once you overcome your fear, you become limitless. Your fears are your limits and if you can push past that, you're invincible, like nothing can shake you. You will emanate confidence. Final thing I will say is that your pain is your power. If I think about what I've done in the past year with my social media, I've talked a lot about my experience and my pain, things that have happened to me that I think, hmm, if I had known this before, then I would have been much better equipped to deal with things that have happened to me. And I think, look, if I can share this and help somebody, maybe they won't have to go through the pain that I did. And weirdly then, your pain, or certainly for me, my pain was my power. By sharing my story and by sharing what I had experienced, I was hopefully, or I'm hopefully empowering other people. And I'm empowering myself as well. Going through this journey of sharing my experience on social media and trying to help other people, has empowered me, it's liberated me and freed me and healed me as well, which I was just not expecting at all. So weirdly, your pain can be channeled into a place that provides other people with empowerment. And in 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 tandem with that, and as a sort of byproduct, you end up empowering yourself, you end up becoming more powerful and more confident. Several of my favorite YouTubers started doing YouTube from a place of pain, from a place of discomfort, and from a place of desperation of wanting to get out of the situation that they're in. And they've turned that into their power. They have changed millions of lives. They have empowered so many people. They have done great things and given so much to the world. So your pain is your power. You can help other people with it. And again, turning what you've experienced into a way of growing is so helpful. My, my pain and what I've experienced has it helped me grow, it's helped me level up, it's made me more mature, it's made me more self-aware, socially aware. It's, it's equipped me, even though I wish I never really had to go through it, it has still equipped me for things that I'm so grateful for. Like I'm in a way I'm so grateful for what I've been through because it's equipped me to not only share my story and help other people hopefully, but also to empower myself. I think as well when you come from like a place of pain, you want to get out of it, you want to grow, you want to escape it, you want to work through it so that you no longer feel it. And so actually you end up healing it and you end up, you know, ha having a better life because you've worked through that pain and you're no longer no longer willing to sit in that pain and experience that pain that you do something about it. Pain forces you to grow, it forces you to choose yourself actually. And that's something that I've really realized. And so seeing your pain and looking at your pain and thinking, I wish that didn't happen to me, like I'm really annoyed, it's held me back in this way. Cause I used to think like that. 
I used to think, oh, it's really held me back. Like I really struggled with mental health problems, certainly depression, anxiety from the age of like 12 to 24. And I really resented it because I feel like it held me back. And now I'm kind of looking at it from a place of gratitude because like I said, I've made an entire social platform because of that pain. So maybe your pain can empower you too. And for example, say if you're interested in being an entrepreneur, your pain points can be what creates an amazing product or an amazing service. Your strife and your struggle can be what instigates you and pushes you to choose yourself and to choose what makes you happy and to, to be successful because you're coming from this tenacious, like I need something to happen, like, I want this so bad, I want to live a fulfilling life, like, I want to create something for myself and only pain really kind of creates that sort of drive in my opinion. So see it as a positive thing if you can. I know it's not ideal, we should never have to deal with pain or go through it, but if you can try and flip the script on it and see it as not an opportunity, but certainly as a, as a power, then it will empower you so much. Anyway, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you took some value from it as always. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I am so grateful for everybody that has subscribed and just engaged my content. It means absolutely everything to me and I wanna grow this community of people that are interested in self-development, mindset work, manifestation and so on. So if you do enjoy it, please definitely engage and, and give us a follow. Thank you so much for watching my video, especially to the very end. With that, have a fantastic remainder of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.